Hi, my name is Olivia Tracy, and I'm a professional firefighter for the city of Sarnia. I am presenting to you my research as a call to action on cold weather affecting firefighter operations. Um, I would like to thank you for this opportunity. My research findings prove that more training and education needs to be in place for cold weather conditions. Um, the faster firefighters can get to the call, the safer the community is. Um, so introduction, uh, I'm going to be talking about health and safety, cause of injury, conditions to consider, efficiency, and funding. So we'll start with health and safety. Um, it is important for firefighters to notice when they need medical help or rehab. Cold climate firefighting can cause extreme health concerns. Uh, hypothermia and frostbite are the two main dangers that firefighters should be aware of when performing fireground operations. Setting up everything before going into a fire and then getting super warm from the fire, or in some cases only being cold. The personal protective equipment that firefighters wear only will keep them warm for a few minutes. None of these situations are ideal. The firefighter dress to stay warm outdoors is likely going to overheat once inside the building, putting themselves at risk for heat stress from extra warmth and weight. When the overheated firefighter then goes outside to change air cylinders, this the situation reverses from hyperthermia to hypothermia. Wet skin soaked in our layers of clothing can create an even greater risk from exposure to extreme cold. This leading to potential life-threatening cases such as hypothermia and frostbite. Keeping hydrated and rested and continuing the ability to maintain a healthy body temperature is essential to a firefighter in extreme cold conditions. So next we have the causes of injury. So um, when firefighters get to a scene, they flow water on the structure that um, is burning and flowing water creates a skating surface that firefighters can slip or fall on. Uh, ladders exposed to flowing water can also become slippery or potentially stuck. Uh, frozen equipment can lead to an injury of a firefighter. So here in this photo we have a Newmark firefighter um, who's chipping off ice off a ladder with, that is all frozen because they were battling a five building fire. And next we have consideration. So consideration, some considerations is decreased visibility. So in Canada we get a lot of um, snowy weather and a lot of the time you can barely even see like down the road. Um, and in this picture here there's snow filled streets in Canada and as you can see you can't really see much other than the snow. Um, increased stopping distances so when you're driving the truck you want to make sure you're slowing down um, way before you usually would because the roads may be wet or icy and you never know. Um, unpredictable actions so you always want to be situational aware of what's going around going on around you, um, especially in winter conditions, not being able to see or stop very fast. Um, you want to be able to react to anything that is in your way. Um, so next we have efficiency. In cold weather conditions, fireground operations and the operations when responding to an incident have a decreased speed due to the hazards that are on the road and firegrounds. Poor road conditions are a huge factor, along with road closures um, that force departments to find alternate routes when responding to an incident. Um, this then causes longer response times. Um, winter road conditions can negatively affect fire apparatus control due to the fact that you're driving on ice and slippery areas with low visibility. Um, this makes it hard for the apparatus to perform normal driving controls like braking and steering. 
Um, having training in areas that deal with decreased visibility, increased stopping distances, unpredictable actions of other motorists is key. The firefighters that get faced with the negative impacts um, of the cold weather could really benefit from this training. Um, once on scene, all members involved in the incident must once again consider and be aware of the seasonal hindrances, hindrances such as snowbanks, blocking hydrants, icy surfaces, and these all lead to longer response times once again. Um, firefighters move slower on snow and ice and when advancing lines, catching hydrants, um, pretty much doing anything, it slows them down. And this is crucial when um, we're called to an incident and urgency is needed. Funding. Um, training and preparation for extreme weather is key to success. Training programs and public education programs could help departments ensure they are prepared for the cold climate. And in conclusion, um, with proper pre-incident planning, training, and awareness, the hazards of extreme winter weather firefighting can be reduced to allow safe operations on the fire grounds. Uh, fire chiefs must ensure that special operations are initiated for predicted periods of unusual cold. Um, this could begin with ensuring each firefighter is dressed to stay as warm as possible uh, without compromising protection. Planning and preparing for the inevi inevitable when fires during the winter is essential. Uh, thank you for letting me present my research to you, and I hope it was 